Welcome to today's HIMSS 20 virtual lightning session presentation, How Enterprise Analytics for Providers Will Shape the Future of Healthcare. Your speaker today is Scott Hample, President of Medi Analytics. Before I turn things over to Scott, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay next week. All attendees will be on mute for the entirety of the webinar. If you have a question, please submit them via the Q&A text box to the right of the screen at any time during the presentation, and we will address them during the Q&A portion. As a follow-up to, to, to today's presentation, you will also receive an email that includes a PDF of today's presentation and recording. Thank you so much for joining us, and with that, with that Scott will start today's presentation. All right, thank you very much, Samantha. So, uh, my name is Scott Hample, and I'm president of Medi Analytics. Uh, just by way of very brief background, um, Medi Analytics is a healthcare analytics company. We've been around for 25 years. Uh, we're currently serving around 2,400 hospitals, 32 payers, uh, the National Health Service in the UK, divisions of Medicaid here in the US, uh, and about 75 million um, member lives. Uh, I've been in the healthcare field 15 years, 25 years enterprise software, and uh, I'm excited to speak to you today about a topic that I do pretty frequently, uh, and that is the growing trend uh, and market convergence uh, towards enterprise analytics in healthcare. So first, uh, I'll explain why the market is converging and the way that it is. Uh, I'll define enterprise analytics, uh, and I'll talk a bit about where the market is headed. So with that, I will go uh, and kind of talk about uh, what's going on from a market problem perspective. So, um, you know, I think everyone knows that today's healthcare an analytics environment uh, has a lot of waste and uh, has some adoption challenges. Uh, and if you look at those first two icons around wasteful spend and financial pressure, uh, I think we all know those macro, macro trends. You know, uh, a general accounting office, um, uh, research of, of the healthcare uh, ecosystem said there's about a trillion of the 3.6 trillion of spend in the U.S. that could be considered uh, as potentially wasteful spend. Uh, meanwhile, you take a look at the financial pressures, the margin pressures uh, that are taking place with the health systems, the transformation and the cost and complexity of fee for value, and every one of our payer and provider clients is under tremendous uh, sort of uh, financial pressure. But it's really the two things on the right that are driving uh, the you know the prevalence of enterprise analytics and really catalyzing the market shift. Uh, the first there is that data complexity. Uh, every one of our payer and provider clients complains about having to orchestrate all these different kinds of data with the digitization of of EMRs with the digitization of healthcare you know records in general it has led to an explosion of different kinds of data sources financial operational clinical uh, they have um, social determinants of health you have x12 you have all sorts of different kinds structured unstructured lots of different data complexity and then far on the right you also have some low adoption challenges, and, and we think that those challenges begin with fragmentation. Uh, at HIMSS in 2019, there were 200, or there were 415 uh, different vendors that represented themselves as analytics vendors. And right now, if you look down there in that bottom left corner, there is 30 billion of spend by payers and providers on services for healthcare analytics in 2020. That's 30 billion that's being spent to stitch together disparate solutions to integrate and upgrade them. That's 30 billion being spent by our clients to staff very large reporting uh, IT department shops to to turn around reports because you have to bring it together you know, across seven tools. And then all of our clients complain that when they do get all that stitched together, they still suffer from low adoption because when things break, people don't trust their data. When different departments come in with different departmental views over whose data is right, they're not trusting their data. And as a result, you don't get the adoption that you want out of your analytics. And so that's why you see the stats that are at the bottom of this chart. There's high spending going on in healthcare analytics, but low satisfaction. And so we look at that and we go, well, this fragmented market is a real problem. You know, Class did a survey and said on average, every Epic client has nine analytics tools on average, in addition to their Epic system. 
and our payer clients report that they have 20, 30, 50 tools. They talk about no vendor left behind, you know, as sort of a tongue in cheek statement. And, you know, this is, uh, this is causing tremendous fragmentation. This is causing tremendous spend and low adoption. And we think that this is a challenge uh, that needs to be addressed in the marketplace. And so it is our perspective that you are going to see a consolidation take place. And that consolidation is going to be towards an enterprise analytics platform. In fact, we're already seeing it. While I mentioned there were 415 uh, analytics vendors in HIMSS in 2019, there were only 280 uh, at, you know, at the beginning as I was looking at what HIMSS 20 was going to have uh, in attendance. Now, it's hard to say because I know a lot of companies withdrew uh, in the days leading up to, you know, what was going to be HIMSS and we've gone virtual. But I definitely think that we were going to see less than 415 and that's indicative of the, of the consolidation that is taking place. So we think that the market will consolidate to having these four key capabilities in an enterprise analytics platform. The ability to orchestrate data wide variety of data sources, financial, clinical, and operational, the ability to service up that data in an analytics platform that is universal and modern across payer and provider, a, that the analytics solution will have to have healthcare context. If we don't have healthcare context, we won't satisfy the healthcare end users and we will lose the adoption of those, of those healthcare constituents. And then lastly, the ability to uh, completely personalize a solution. And so an enterprise analytics solution will need to be able to personalize to the complex needs of the payers and provider ecosystem. And if you're not really sure about you know, my, this theory here, I, I think we could take a walk down memory lane. And I think everyone remembers you know, probably 15 years ago when consumers used to buy each of these separately. And over the course of 15 years, starting probably sometime around June 29th, 2007, when the iPhone came out, very few Americans are now spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on each of those particular tools. They've all consolidated onto one enterprise device that gives them a lot of utility and trust in one device. You can see this thing outside of healthcare too. If we move from consumer and we go into uh, B2B software, you can see this trend in software. If you look at this 10 years ago, uh, this was the vendor landscape for IT service management software, the kind of software that they use in data centers and on service desks and in IT, um, IT departments across the country. They used to be buying all kinds of those solutions on the left and stitching them all together. Ten years later, the market has consolidated and generally everyone buys one of these top solutions that are in the, you know, the top quadrants here. If you look at healthcare, We've seen this in healthcare as well. So 15 years ago, there were more than 400 different EMR uh, vendors. And, you know, people would buy, diff buy EMRs departmentally. And today, you know, everyone buys pretty much the, the top five or six that account for the majority of market share. There's still some diversity in terms of some, uh, some specialty-based uh, EMRs. But generally, everything is sort of aggregated in the inpatient setting to the Epics, the Cerners, the, you know, all scripts, Meditex, those kinds of things. So if you if we believe that uh, things are going to converge in analytics into a uh, enterprise sort of platform scenarios, well, well, who's buying that? Because historically, people have been buying analytics departmentally, you know, at the VP of RevCycle or uh, the VP of Provider Contracting or, you know, you pick your, you know, sort of different domain in a health system or a health plan and, and you had your different departmental buyers. And that's where we've been seeing another trend. And, and that trend is the growth of the chief data and analytics officer. And so this is now being reported uh, in Fortune 1000 companies at over 68% of them have a chief data officer or a chief analytics officer. And recently we're hearing that uh, in payers of mid to large size that more than 50% of them have some sort of chief data officer or chief analytics officer. And we're seeing it more in health systems as well uh, with over 30% there. In a recent IBM study and many other studies talk about folks that have this sort of enterprise focus and this enterprise mandate to figure out how to best maximize the organization's data assets, those organizations tend to do better and perform better. And so this is the new buyer 
this is the buyer of the enterprise analytics platform and the convergence uh, that I described earlier. And they are the ones who are opening the doors to other key titles like chief medical officers or chief financial officers uh, and really driving that increased consumption of enterprise analytics. So again, getting back to what is enterprise analytics then in healthcare, um, here's what it looks like. First, you need a platform that is going to be able to orchestrate massive amounts of data, thousands of different data sources, financial, clinical, operational, and have that joined up uh, into, one plat into one platform. That platform, whoops, I'm, there must be some automation here. Uh, that platform um, will converge that data across payer and provider, and that platform needs to be modern as well in order to be able to attract the eyeballs uh, of U.S. consumers. So you need to be able to have good, nice visualization akin to like a Tableau. You need to be able to inject predictive machine learning models or algorithms from third-party content providers, you know, whether it be groupers or uh, code sets. You need to be able to inject those things into the platform. Third, uh, you need to be able to have healthcare context. If you do not have that healthcare context, and I apologize, there's animation that is running amok here. If you don't have that healthcare context, then you won't be able to um, drive the adoption out of the end users. And then lastly, you need to have a platform as a service capability so that people can bring in their own analytics because not every vendor is gonna be able to satisfy all the needs of uh, the healthcare constituents. They're gonna have their own data sets, their own things that they want brought in. And so any enterprise analytics platform will need to be able to enable the clients themselves or partners to bring in data sets and be able to propagate those out in terms of consumable analytics like reports and views and dashboards that are consumed right alongside the others. So why are the chief analytics officers looking for this kind of an enterprise uh, analytics solution? Well, I talked together about how in the current landscape, stitching together all these fragmented tools is problematic because it lowers people's trust in their data. It causes things to break down. You don't have one source of truth. And so you want to be able to drive adoption. And there is an enormous growing correlation in the marketplace between the companies that are able to drive adoption of analytics and can demonstrate it perform a lot better than those companies that don't. So in this particular schema, Gartner took a look at all of the public company mentions around analytics uh, from companies that, that are in the uh, Fortune 500 and those that mention it a lot versus those that mention it very little. And what they found is those that mention it a lot you know, had revenue that grew at 12.53% per year over that five-year period. And companies that don't mention analytics much, they were shrinking at about a 2% clip at a year over year. So an enormous correlation between adoption of analytics and performance of an organization. Now that was outside of healthcare. Inside of healthcare, we focus on different outcomes, you know, triple aim type stuff in terms of patient satisfaction, reduce cost, improve quality. But we're seeing the same sort of outcomes and correlation between performance and adoption of analytics in the healthcare sector, just around different kinds of outcomes. Secondly, they're looking for a wide variety of ROI across a number of areas. So with the pivot to fee for value, you know, contracts tie clinical performance to revenue performance. Expense performance is tied to clinical performance. And so you want this all in one system. So there is an integration of clinical, financial, and operational, and the chief analytics officers recognize that and want to see that all in one platform. And then lastly, you know, I talked about that vendor fragmentation and that spend. So another reason they're looking for this enterprise analytics platform is that there's lower TCO and lower complexity with a single source solution. And so if you can find a solution that can displace some or all or a material amount of this spend that is going on on things like are listed here or the 415 other vendors that I have, then you save money and put money back into, you know, our health, our health services and, and hopefully uh, into better care. So what the chief analytics officers and chief data officers are looking to achieve is something like 
this. And while this slide is obviously somewhat aspirational, it is where the market is headed. So for the first time in five plus years, we saw the, the number of analytics and vendors at HIMSS is down materially from 415 to 237. So I think we're already starting to see this consolidation uh, that's taking place. So, you know, at Medi Analytics, we, we think there's billions and billions of waste that's in this. And if the enterprise analytics is done right, then we can all power insights for millions of healthcare workers by driving analytics adoption, by generating insight across clinical, financial, and operational domains and doing it for a fraction of today's costs. So I think everyone is trying to charge towards this enterprise analytics platform and resolve stuff like that into a singular sort of platform. And we at Medi, of course, we're proud to embrace this challenge as well um, and think that the trend benefits, you know, our overall healthcare ecosystem for each of us that's, you know, in this U.S. healthcare system. So that's a 15 minute lightning session on enterprise analytics. I hope you found this informative uh, and thank you for joining. At this point, I will turn it over for questions. Thanks, Scott. If you have a question, please submit them in the Q&A text box to the right of the screen now. Scott, we do have a few questions that did come in. The first one is, what is a typical or standard implementation time for an enterprise analytics platform or project? It seems like it would take a while. Um, well, more and more, that is going down. Um, and so when you think about the characteristics that I described in the enterprise analytics platform, you have the data orchestrated up through the platform and into the products. What that means is that the products are pre-built and predefined, and the data is already figured out that if the data can be provided in the spec, in the data spec that the vendor is providing, then the analytics in today's enterprise analytics platforms can light up very quickly. Now, every client will then want to personalize it further and have like particular fields that they use or a particular report that they want, you know, generated on top. But I would give you an example at, at Medi Analytics, our, our products come out of the box with 700, uh, you know, turnkey reports, views and dashboards across the product portfolio today. And if it, data is providing that spec, we can turn that around. In some cases, we've turned that around in a matter of weeks. If the client wants analytics that are not part of that product, then there is a bit of uh, time, but there are lots of new tools and they exist in the Enterprise Analytics Vendors Data Orchestration Toolkit um, in order to bring in those additional data sources. And so you're looking at typically around 90 day implementations for additional data sources and the generation of additional analytics that would come alongside the products themselves. So, you know, we've seen what used to be, and I had a survey statistic in there earlier, you know, implementations that used to be normal around one year in duration in payers uh, and, you know, nine months in duration in providers uh, to somewhere around 60 to 90 days in general. Thank you. One more question. How does Money Analytics support driving adoption within your clients' organizations, as in ensure use, logins, et cetera? Yep, uh, that's another good question. Um, so, uh, you know, one, uh, you know, I talked about the characteristics of the enterprise analytics platform. So one way you drive adoption is that you have the right data coming in in a easy to use, navigate and modern platform that has things like, you know, nice visual data exploration and good capabilities for uh, things like dashboarding and, and that sort of stuff. Then on top of that, you need to have the healthcare context and the ability to bring in additional data sources alongside that. Those are the four elements that make up the health enterprise analytics platform. If you have those four, you'll get some good adoption just on the merits of those four alone. But that's typically not enough. Uh, there is a data literacy challenge that's out there and exists in the um, in healthcare. You know, people didn't go to college to get degrees in, you know, healthcare analytics, the majority of, of consumers. And so furthermore, 
if you can wrap consultative services uh, around that, so people that come from backgrounds of knowing how to consume those analytics, and, and, and we try to do that with our account management function and advise clients on how they can get more benefit out of the analytics that are being rendered in the platform, that will help drive adoption. And then another thing that a lot of product companies are, are going to, and we use ourselves, is really clicks data. You know, measuring the clicks uh, and and the, how a client is clicking through and navigating our platform. And we can see then with like our best in class clients, how they are actually using our functionality, what they're doing, and we can learn from them and help advise other clients then on what they might be able to do you know features that they are not consuming and we can then engage with them and learn about why they're not consuming that and maybe if we make improvements we can drive adoption so there's all sorts of ways that you can use clicks data to really understand the way your uh, your users are experiencing the software and figure out how to you know take interventions and, and drive more meaningful engagement for them so that's the other thing that we do thank you scott no more questions at the time, so thank you for all of your participation and questions. As a reminder, we will send you a PDF and recording of today's presentations. Thank you again for joining us. You may now disconnect. Thank you very much.